Robots putting in work. Helloing people of the world. It's your favorite awkwardly car color coordinated Sarah here with another truck review. Today I have the 2023 Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro and the special color of the year this year is solar orange. This is super pretty. Anyway, I'm gonna get this thing up in the air. We're gonna nerd out in the tech specs, see how this thing is constructed and then we'll take it out and give it the beans and play with it in the dirt. That sounds really weird. Okay, I love this color. I love orange. I'm so obsessed with it. Oh, the hitch is at an angle. Oh, the pin adapter for trailer is up at an, oh, so you don't whack it off road. <laughs> Speaking of which, this thing is capable of towing 5,000 pounds. Got a black tip to the TRD catback exhaust system, which is typically a catalog accessory for regular 4Runners, but the TRD Pro model gives you all those TRD accessories standard. The 4Runner utilizes a solid rear axle with a four link suspension setup. The highlight of the TRD Pro though is these guys right here, the Fox Racing internally bypassed remote reservoir two and a half inch dampers. That's cool. The rear diff is actually manufactured by Hino Motors, their HD trucking company in Japan. That diff houses a set of 373 gears with an electronically controllable locker. Well, that's interesting. There's a like an inch spacer between the axle tube and the actual knuckle. It is equipped with a rear anti-sway bar that measures in at approximately 20 millimeter. Whilst I'm measuring, might as well see the exhaust. Well, that's weird. It's got dual inlets coming from a single. Oh, it's bigger back there. That's weird. Okay, anyway, uh, 63 millimeter or SAE two and a half inch. <laughs> The fifth generation or N280 Toyota 4Runner has been around now since 2010 and this gen will likely span on until 2024 before it is replaced. This TRD Pro model up above my head weighs in at 4,750 pounds. Skid plate test. Yep, that hurts my knuckles. It's an adorable little skinny boy underneath the transfer case right here. What the f Look at this spaghetti mess. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm actually really curious the engineering purpose of making the brake line do that before these two unions. Well, that's interesting. The fuel tank strap, yeah, it's actually, it turns into a cross member that goes to the other side of the frame, weird. Two speed transfer case with a 2.56 ratio on your low range and some unused holes. Those are, it looks like stainless thread certs inside there. I couldn't find anything online who manufactures the transfer case and I don't see any labeling on it. I'm assuming it must be Eisen. Reason being for that speculation is because up above my head is the only transmission available for this thing and it is manufactured by Eisen. It is the A750F, which is a traditional five-speed automatic transmission with torque converter that has a maximum torque input of 500 Newton meters, which is approximately 368 square cookies force. That was a terrible joke. I am so sorry for that. <laughs> Got some pretty thick tubular braces that go to the removable transmission cross member right here. That's an interesting looking mount. Weird. It's got this like disc looking thing on the top of it. Oh, it's it's threaded into a plastic body. Must be for a vibration maybe. Fully boxed body on frame design, the way a off-road SUV should be. Front suspension wise, you got an all steel in construction, double wishbone setup. Must be a very untasty chicken. Paired with another set of Fox two and a half inch internally bypass dampers with a TRD spring. And now that I think about it, I don't even know if chickens have wishbones. I think that just might be turkeys. I'm not a birdologist, so I, I couldn't tell you. It's weird, the Tacoma TRD Pro gets a little bit different treatment for the upper control arm as the forerunner. What does that measure in at? 29 millimeter. Now up above these skid plates, rear one's steel, this front one's super thick aluminum. Uh, is an open front diff. And one can argue that is a massive shortcoming compared to some of the offerings from Jeep and Ford and General Motors that offer front lockers. However, don't forget Toyota knows how to do robots. And I will show and demonstrate that in a little bit off-road. All 
right, time for the braking test. No one behind me? Ready? Oh man. Oh jeez. Oh. That was that was something. I don't I don't know how I feel about that. It was uh it was aggressive. That braking was just accomplished thanks to a set of four piston dual opposed front calipers and a 338 millimeter or 13.3 inch front rotor. And it's paired with a set of 17 by seven satin black TRD wheels that have some nice concavity to them. I tried looking on the backside to see if I can find the offset, not the wrapper, the ET, which isn't the alien. If you don't know what that means, I can't help you. And I couldn't, I couldn't find it. Anyway, it's paired with a set of 26570 Neato Taro Grappler all-terrain tires, which we will see how you do off-road in a bit. I like this. The splash guards are blended right into a plastic rocker cover that spans the entire side of the truck all down the pinch weld. That's nice for stones and corrosion and stuff. Out back, unlike the Tacoma, you get disc brakes. It's a 312 millimeter or 12.3 inch rotor with a single piston caliper. The wheel and tire, same size as you get up front. In the name of science, I am now going to give this thing the beans, the orange beans, pumpkin beans. I don't know if that's a thing. Bolstering assessment. Hmm. Hmm. That's a tough one. It, it had a hinkling of bolster ability, just a little bit. Uh, the seats. Yep, you would expect it. They are heated. There's a little Rio stat here in the center though, so you can vary the heat an infinite amount of possibilities depending on where your finger stops it on. And also, it does have a heated steering wheel, but I almost didn't realize it because the button is hidden. It's all the way down here under the stop start button. As far as drive modes go, they're mostly off-road centered. I'll get to the MTS stuff later. I do have the ability to slap this thing down into sport mode. TRD shift knob, a Fig Newton holder, removable so you can clean your nasty food gunk out of there. It's really hard to tell if this is real or fake carbon fiber. Good job. And also up here on the roof, I can defeat traction control. Hold it down. All right, let's see what this thing can do. Give it a little assistance. Let it eat. There you go. A little hesitation, a little bit of torque management there. Mm. Yeah, I like that sound at the upper RPM. That's good. Not bad. A little bit of hesitation with the shifts. Pop, food pop, food pop. Good struts, and it's painted underneath. Good job, Toyota. That's an interesting looking hood insulation. It's like a burnt beehive. Like someone set the bees on fire. Don't do that. Underneath the hood of the 2023 Toyota 4Runner is one of my personal favorite V6s that Toyota has offered, the 1GRFE, which is an all aluminum, four cam, four valve per cylinder, four liter, V6 that produces 270 horsepower at 5,600 RPM and 278 pound-feet of torque at 4,400 RPM. I'm happy that the 4Runner never went to the three and a half liter V6 that the current generation Tacoma has. This is a much gruntier and all around better choice for a truck or SUV in my opinion. Digging in a little bit deeper on the 1GR found in the 4Runner, that differed from what you saw in the previous generation of the Tacoma, whereas this has dual VVT which stands for Variable Valve Timing Intelligent. It has it on both intake and exhaust cams, which is why this made more power than the former generation Tacoma, as well as the FJ Cruiser also shared this power plant. Now, it has a 94 by 95 millimeter bore and stroke with a 10.4 to one compression ratio, and it has just port injection. It's kind of old school, and that's what I like about it. It's none of that simulated Atkinson cycle stuff that you get in the three and a half liter V6 in the the new Tacoma. Let me pop off the engine cover for you guys real quick. I like the little like dimples in there simulating six cylinders. That's kind of cute. The plastic intake manifold, you can see those massive valve covers for this four cam. It's absolutely huge. It's made out of aluminum. 
but just big heads in general. Really big diameter throttle body on this thing as well. It's got absolutely massive air box silencer. It's a super clean looking shroud covering the top half of the radiator core support. It looks like fake carbon fiber almost. I guess they only want you to use award winning HVAC technicians to charge the AC on this thing. Reviewing this really makes me regret selling my 2011 Tacoma TRD off-road with a 1GR in it and six speed manual. That was a good truck. One could argue that the Forerunner isn't quite on the level of a Bronco Raptor or a Wrangler Rubicon. However, I want to tackle the most challenging hill that I have to pick from out here and uh, see what this thing can do because I have some faith in it. Now, I have two main systems I can choose from for doing this. I have the A-Track mode as well as multi-terrain select. The A-Track stands for Advanced Traction Control. That focuses primarily just on stopping wheel spin, free spin when you have a wheel up in the air by pulsating the ABS system. It's more for getting you out of a bad situation. Multi-terrain select, that uses the ABS system to pulse modulate the brakes as well. However, it also takes control of the throttle input as well, so you don't have any like touchy movements and cause slippage. Pull it down to four high, slap it over, up to four low. I can only use the mud, sand, and dirt in four high. I have to select four low if I want to use loose rock, mogul, or rock. I think this is more mogul. It doesn't look like much on camera, but I'm telling you in person, that's a much different story. Now I have 9.6 inches of ground clearance and the approach angle is 33 degrees on this thing. So hopefully I don't have any issues, but geez, I didn't realize how deep this has gotten. I'm not letting any air of these tires. This is straight out of the box, street pressure. Yeah, buddy. Nice. Robots putting in work. Hell yeah. I didn't even need a front locker. Now keep in mind that was without the rear diff locked. I did not lock the diff. I didn't think I needed to. So I'm going to now use my hill descent control and we're gonna go down the typical hill climb hill that I do in these reviews. Pretty slow for this one at the top. I don't wanna slip into that little ravine. There you go. Let's, that might be a little too slow. There we go. Go robots, go. Jeez, that got so much deeper in the middle. Where's my trail cam? Trail cam, please. Definitely wanna keep an eye on that stuff. This is so deep in the center. It's probably like a good two and a half, three feet deep in the middle of this, and it's really hard packed sand. So if I were to slide into the middle of that, you can imagine what it would do to the side of the truck. Here's the pucker moment. Woo hoo hoo! Woo jeez! <sighs> All right, crawl control. Good job. I use a little bit of my own input on the brake right there too as well. I think I need to lap the rally special stage of this thing because that's the kind of shit you do in a 4Runner. So, go! I love the sound of a 1GR, especially when they had the TRD blower on them. It's a shame that Toyota discontinued that. Ooh, robot's getting angry. Man. I was just able to get the ass end to rotate around just by tapping the brake real quick mid-corner. This thing's a lot of fun. let me get a little sideways. The robots are a little intrusive, but they're kind of, I feel like they're a little bit smarter than past Toyotas. It's smarter than, than they were in my 2011 Tacoma double cab. That thing's fucking awesome. It's still so fun. The fact that you can get the new Bronco with a seven speed manual and there was a fairly high take rate on it, shows there is a demand for them and still Jeep offers one too. And they do have a six speed manual that bolts up to this one GR that was in the former FJ Cruiser and the current Tacoma. And I really wish Toyota would still offer it. It would make this so much fun and be really unique and different to drive. 
I forgot just how much room is in the back of a 4Runner. That's actually super spacious back here. Big old JBL thumpy boy right there. Charity Pro mats, little cargo slider. Well, that's neat. The rear wiper is hidden up inside the spoiler instead of having it down below. I wish more manufacturers did that. That's clean. How far can I zoom out? Whoa, can I go to, yep, I can go to the Arctic Circle. How about that? No data. Conspiracy. You could ding this thing for having cheap feeling interior, but you don't buy a TRD Pro model for a luxury interior. That's just kind of an oxymoron to me. You buy it for off-road capabilities and getting dirty and being easy, easy to clean out. Fuel economy wise, yeah, it's not the greatest fuel economy, but why are you buying one of these vehicles to begin with? It's kind of like you can't have your cake and eat it too. I guess you could, but then you lose reliability. You really can't have cake and eat it too. You got to watch what you eat or you're going to get fat. All right, let's give this thing some scores. OGs in the comments section, fill in the new people on what my ratings actually mean. First up, the bean score. This 2023 TRD Pro 4Runner gets a rating of... Next, cookie score. Uh, this thing is equipped at about $55,000, so it gets a rating of... Followed by the wrench score, and this specific generation of 4Runner as equipped gets a rating of... Uh, next is the meatball score, and just FYI, it originated on a TRD Pro 4Runner. This solar orange space meatball is getting a rating of... Lastly is the penguin score, and this solar orange beast gets a rating of... Closing thoughts, if you're on the fence, of buying a Toyota 4Runner right now, I cannot stress this enough. Go for the final model year of a current generation. Don't wait for the new one to come out, even though it's gonna have new features, probably a new engine, et cetera, et cetera. You gotta wait for them to work out all the kinks when a new model comes out, and you're gonna get the most cool features for your money on the last model year. So, hope you guys enjoyed this review. I'll see you soon with another. Bye.